Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to another English lesson, which is intended for grade 11 students. In this lesson, we are going to talk about uses of cameras. And this lesson is taken from module 3, which is entitled The Media, and lesson 9, which is entitled Uses of Cameras. In this lesson, we are going to describe types of cameras, their uses, and how they compare to each other. If you are interested and you want to, know, to learn more about this, please stay with us after this break. Welcome back, dear students. As I said before this break, our lesson today will talk about cameras in general. We are going to talk about their types, their functions, and how they differ from each other. Of course, you have a personal camera and you use it for different reasons. But there are other people whose job is to use a camera. So, is your camera the same as the professional people who use cameras? Of course not. In this lesson, we are going to talk about these things. But before that, we are going to see the new vocabulary items that you need to know in this lesson. So let's start. Cameras perform different functions. And therefore, they have different names. For example, if we say, if we see a camera like this, you can see we have cameras either in the street or in the roof of a building. And what is their functions? What are these cameras used for? They are used for security reasons. And we call them security cameras. OK? Another type of cameras maybe like the ones we have, I have here. You can see doctors performing an operation and using a camera. This camera is called for what reasons? For surgeries, so we call it surgical camera. A surgical camera is the one which is used by doctors, especially when performing operations. Next type of camera is the one we use at home or in studios to record films for television or cinemas. And these are called television or film cameras. Another type of cameras is the one that you use on a computer for chatting, for example. And these are called web cameras, web cameras. Another type for, you see the person here, is observing different locations. So he is doing what you call surveillance. So this type of camera is called surveillance camera. Surveillance camera. OK. Now we have seen different types of cameras. I want to check whether you followed with me or not. So I'm going to write the different types of cameras, which are surveillance, surgical, security, web cameras, and television film cameras. And you have pictures of these cameras and their purposes or their locations at the airport to create animation on a computer used by doctors and to control speed on a motorway. So which name goes with which photo for what reason? So number one, surveillance camera is, where is it? Yes, the one at the bottom. This is what you call surveillance camera, and it is used for what reasons? To control speed on a motorway, right. Next camera is surgical camera, and it's clear by its name, surgical, that is for surgeries. Therefore, it should be in hospitals. Yes, the first one on the top, and it is used for, it is used by doctors. A security camera which is found either in streets or on top of buildings, is used here uh, at an airport. So it is a security camera, and it is used at an airport 
or in a supermarket or in banks or other uh, important buildings. The web cameras, of course you are familiar with this one because I'm sure you have one. And it is used on a computer for chatting. Another type, the last one, which is television camera. And it is the one before the last. And it is used to create animation in films. Again, I'm going to summarize these things for you and show you this uh, slide. Surveillance camera is used to control speed on a motorway. And surgical cameras you are used by doctors. Security camera is used at an airport. And web cameras are used on a computer for chatting. The last one, television film camera, is used to create animation in films. So probably you use one of these cameras, or maybe more, at least a web camera and a television camera camera for shooting uh, scenes in your uh, family celebrations or when you travel, okay? Uh, there are more things to know about cameras. Let's go on with our lesson. And now we are going to move to the new vocabulary items that you should know. The first one is from the picture. What can you see? Is it a table? No, it's not a table. It does not have legs. It is what we call pedestal. A, yes, please listen. A pedestal. Pedestal. A pedestal is, as the definition says, the base or support on which a statue or column is mounted. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the screen, you can see that my computer is based on a pedestal. Right? So a pedestal is. Uh, a base or a support on which you put something, either a computer, a picture, a vase, or whatever. An example illustrating this word could be, there was a vase of flowers on a wooden pedestal in the corner of the room. And by the way, pedestals could be made of wood, iron, metal, or other materials. And they are, most of the time, uh, carefully decorated because they add decoration to the room. Okay, which word do you think will describe these two people? People who consume things. They are called, listen please. Consumer. Again? Consumer. Consumer. Consumer is a person who consumes things. So the definition will say the person purchasing goods and services for personal use. That is, he or she buys things for his own use. He is called a consumer. You are consumers. We are all consumers, right? Uh, an example to illustrate the, this word could be agricultural companies have failed to convince consumers that GM foods are safe. GM here, genetically modified food. So, agricultural companies have failed to convince or to persuade consumers that genetically modified foods are safe because many people doubt the safety of GM food. Okay? Uh, we are all consumers, and there is a saying which says that the consumer is always right. Okay? Another example, uh, another word, sorry. If you look at the picture here, it says power, power. Now, there is no uh, picture to illustrate this word except the definition which says power or ability. If you have the power or ability, it means that you have what? I have the power or I have the ability. If you want to join the two words together and say I have, listen please. Capability. Again? Capability. Capability. Capability is the power or the ability. If you want to use this word in a sentence, for example, you can say, with this modern technology, we finally have the capability to perform complex tasks in a short time. Of course, technology has helped us a lot, and it has provided us with a capability to do different things precisely and in a short time. Our next word is 
Again, if you look at the pictures, they are magnificent here. The lady on the left is reading a magazine, but not any magazine. It's an electronic magazine or newspaper. And on the top, we have a highly sophisticated car. And at the bottom on the right, we have a transparent mobile. Now, which word do you think can talk or describe these pictures? They are highly sophisticated, or what we call they are, yes, please listen. High-end. Again? High-end. High-end. High-end, that is, as the definition explains, denoting the most expensive of a range of products. That is, the latest innovation, the latest uh, product in a range of products. For example, if we talk about mobiles, smartphones are the high-end products in the mobile industry. Now, let's see a sentence which uses this word. For example, young people are eager to purchase high-end smartphones. Not any smartphones, but the latest products in smartphones. Our next word is, listen please. Period drama. Again? Period drama. Period drama. Period drama, what is it? It's a drama, it's a period drama, or what we call a play belonging to or characteristic of a past historical time. That is, a film about the past. Or it could be a film or a play. A sentence illustrating this word could be, my grandparents prefer to watch period dramas to live sports. Of course, grandparents like to recall the pa their past. So they prefer watching pa period dramas to live sports or comedy films or whatever, which is part of our present time. Our next word in this list is, could you please listen? Motion picture. Again? Motion picture. Yes, motion picture. What is a motion picture? It is a story or event recorded by a camera as a set of moving images and shown in a theater or on television. In other terms, a motion picture is a movie which is taken by moving images to be displayed on TV or in cinemas. A sentence explaining this word could be, a professional video camera is good for recording motion pictures. Of course, not all cameras are good for recording moving images. So a professional video camera is good, is preferable uh, for recording motion pictures. All right? Let's see another word. Here it is. Could you please listen? Hydraulic. Again? Hydraulic. Hydraulic. Hydraulic is what is something which is relating to or operated by a liquid moving in a confined space under pressure. There are some devices or mechanics which function either by electricity or by mechanics, but here they are uh, functioning by the pressure of liquid in a container. A sentence could be, thankfully, the fully hydraulic brakes are well up to the task. People prefer to have hydraulic brakes instead of mechanical brakes. Okay? Our next word is, could you please listen? Nowadays. Again? Nowadays. Nowadays. Nowadays is an adverb, which means at the present time, and it is in contrast with the past. We say nowadays, simply it is at the present time. A sentence illustrating this word is, the first mobile phones were heavy and clumsy to use, but nowadays they are much easier to handle. And this is, of course, true. Uh, our next word, if you look at the pictures here, we have some devices 
but what are they used for? If you look at the pictures in the middle, they are used f with a camera uh -huh, to keep the camera in a certain position and not enable it to move right or left. So this device can be described as, could you please listen to the word? Stabilizing. Another time? Stabilizing. Stabilizing. This is a stabilizing device. That is, it stabilizes the camera or whatever machine. Stabilizing could be used in a sentence as this one. Now, the definition is causing to become stable, and the sentence could be family relations are the most stabilizing elements in a society. In a society, everything changes except family relations. So, family is the most stabilizing element in a society. Of course, you can use this word in different contexts. Now, that was all for the vocabulary items that you have to learn for this lesson. Now that we have done with the vocabulary items, we are going to do a practice exercise on these items. So, uh, this exercise is a fill-in one, and you have to fill the blanks with these words. They are pedestal, nowadays, consumer, stabilizing, and capability. That is the words that we have seen earlier. Now look at example number one. The is always ready to pay more for a higher quality product. So which word fits the blank? Yes, please. I'll give you a chance. Fine. Consumer. Excellent. The consumer is always ready to pay more for a higher quality product. Since it's product and since it's buying and paying for, so it has to do with the consumer. Number two. Teenagers are interested in computer games. Now, computer games are related to what? Teenagers. Now, when teenagers are interested in computer games, we have pedestal, nowadays, stabilizing capability. It is, yes, nowadays, excellent. So at this time, at the present, teenagers, of course, are interested in computer games. Number three, this type of camera comes in with a device. Now, what type of device is it? Pedestal, stabilizing, or capability? Yes, excellent, your guess was right. It's stabilizing device. And the last one, based lamps are found in almost every house. Based lamps, that is lamps which are based on something. Either pedestal or capability. Of course, yes, you're right, pedestal. So pedestal-based lamps are found in almost every house. And the last word, capability, can you put it in a sentence? Yes, why not try it? You can say, for example, I have the capability of speaking many languages, or I have the capability of uh, doing uh, heavy exercises, or whatever exercise can come to your mind. Okay, now let's move to the reading comprehension, and we are going to read a text which is composed of three paragraphs, and your task is to identify the purpose of each paragraph. We are going to see each paragraph in isolation, and you have to find its purpose, or in other terms, its main idea. Okay, so paragraph one is like this, and does this paragraph explain the different types of professional camera, video cameras, or does it introduce professional video cameras, or does it list the kind of work done using professional cameras? You are going to listen while reading the text and then find the answer. So please pay attention. Listen. A professional video camera, often called a television camera, is a high-end electronic device for recording moving images. They were originally developed for use in television studios, but are nowadays commonly used to record everything from life sport to period dramas. Portable professional cameras are generally much larger than consumer cameras and are designed to be carried on the shoulder. Fine. Now, what do you think the purpose of this paragraph is? Okay. 
Is it the first one, second, or the third? Yes, that's excellent. It's to introduce professional video cameras, and it's clear in the first sentence, a professional video camera, often called. So it uh, presents or introduces professional cameras. Now, what's about the second paragraph? Again, this is the paragraph, and these are the choices. You are going to listen and then try to find the answer. Remember, we are trying to find the general idea or the purpose of the paragraph. So please listen. There are two types of professional video cameras. The first are high-end portable recording cameras, known as camcorders. These are used for ENG, electronic news gathering. They are similar to consumer recorders, but they are bigger and usually have a shoulder stabilizing device on the shoulder. Studio cameras, on the other hand, lack the recording capability of a camcorder. These are fixed on studio pedestals, that is they stand on the floor with a hydraulic mechanism to adjust the height and wheels. When used outside the studio, they are often on tracks. Some studio cameras are light and small enough to be taken off the pedestal and used on the shoulder, but they still have no recorder of their own and are cable bound. Fine. Now what is your answer? Yes. Excellent. To explain the different types of professional video cameras. And here we have two camcorders and studio cameras and the specifications or uh, functions of each. The third paragraph, again, the same thing. You are going to listen while reading and then decide on the purpose of the paragraph. Television, video and motion picture camera operators produce images that tell a story, inform or entertain an audience, or record an event. They use their cameras to shoot a wide range of material including television series, studio programs, news and sporting events, private ceremonies, motion pictures and documentaries. Many different shots may need to be taken. With the increase in digital technology, much of the editing work is done on a computer, taking the recording capability of video cameras to even higher levels. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of this paragraph? Yes, excellent to list the kind of work done using professional cameras. Of course, uh, people use professional cameras for different reasons, either to take pictures or record events or uh, private, taking photos for private ceremonies or whatever. Okay, we are going to talk about your own uses of cameras later after this. Now, uh, in the second paragraph, the writer compares studio cameras and camcorders. Your task now is to reread the paragraph and try to identify just the things that describe studio cameras. So it says in the second paragraph, how does the writer describe studio cameras? Write a paragraph of four sentences. Now this question is similar to summary making. You are going to read the paragraph, concentrate on the question, and take the main ideas and rephrase them in your own sentences. Okay, let's go to paragraph two and see where the writer describes studio cameras, and then we are going to make a paragraph of our own. So this is the paragraph. You are going to read it and try to identify the information concerning studio cameras. If you go somewhere in the middle of the text, you will find studio cameras, okay? So studio cameras, it means that here, from this instance, the writer is going to talk about studio cameras. So studio cameras, what can we say about them? They are fixed, yes. Again, what else? Uh, they are light and small enough, and pedestal, okay? All right, now these are the key elements concerning studio cameras. We are going to take them as notes and then rephrase our paragraph. So the main ideas are, the, number one, usually fixed on pedestals. Next, sometimes light and small and have no recording 
capability, and the last one, cable bound. So from these ideas, we can formulate a paragraph. And we can say, for example, studio cameras, which are professional video cameras, are usually fixed on pedestals. Sometimes they are small and light and can be used outside the studio. Unlike camcorders, studio cameras have no recording capability. This is why they are cable bound. And this could be a short summary for the second paragraph. Okay, now that we have studied uh, some information about cameras, we are going to move to set book questions, that is questions in, which come in your exams. A sample question could be, for example, how can cameras be helpful to us? That is, how do they help us? And you can say as an example, cameras can be used for different purposes. For example, they can be used for security reasons in buildings such as banks and airports. They can also be used in web chatting, enabling people to see each other. Besides, they help in surgical operations. Finally, they are necessary in film industry. Of course, this is just an example. You can come up with your own answer. Next question is, which of the events that camera operators record is most important to you? Why? That is, what things do cameramen do with cameras that you like most? We can have as an example, news for example, recording news is important to me. I'm interested in both local and world news. This keeps me updated on what's happening around the world. Of course, you can talk about other events. Another question, for what personal reasons do you usually use a camera? What do you use a camera for? For example, we can say, personally, I use a camera to take photos of my family and friends to keep memory of the happy occasions I share with them. Okay? And any answer that comes from you which is reason reasonable is acceptable. Another question says, when buying a camera, what specifications do you look for? That is, what do you base your selection on when buying a camera? When I want to buy a camera, I usually look for one which is small enough to be carried everywhere. I also insist on its memory capacity and its high level of recording stable and moving images. Of course, the price should be reasonable. This is the end of our lesson. I hope you have learned the different types of cameras, their uses, and what they can be used for. Hoping to meet you again. Until then, thank you very much and have a nice time. Thank <laughs> you.